All right. Hello. Episode 212 yeah. of the movie movie. This feels like deja vu. Yeah. Yeah. Saying that out loud. What feels interesting was to me. it that I was doing when we said we were doing episode 212? Was this a dream that I uh, had? I've been having these really that. vivid dreams lately. <laughs> I don't know what was, what was happening. It's I like, know I had a milkshake. You had a milkshake. Yeah. I had a milkshake. Mm-hmm. It seems so clear to me. But it's like it happened, but it didn't happen. I'm going to tell you this weird thing. Mm-hmm. And if our dream starts matching up, yeah, let's maybe, do this. maybe it was real. But if, they, if not, then we're kind of in the clear. Okay. I was on the phone. <laughs> In this dream. Wait, so was I. And I was talking about, and I know this sounds kind of crazy because we're about to talk about movies tonight, but I was on the phone talking about movies in this dream. Okay. Wait, was I there? A guy named Steve who was a hell of a lot like you was there. so (laughs) weird because the two of you, like there were people that were just like you Mm -hmm. and mine too. There was this one guy there who was a shapeshifter. He was Ron, then he was Ronald, then he was Ron Nold, Uh, and then he wasn't sure and sometimes... Was he also (laughs) RJ? I call him RJ sometimes. I thought you called yeah. him that. That's this incredible. is so weird. It is. It's lining up, so I think it's leading towards that maybe this did happen. Yeah. There's Anything. only one explanation, guys. <laughs> we tried to record an episode on the phone. Yeah. Something went wrong. Part Somebody's was wrong. track wasn't recorded. We had yeah. to ditch it in order to block out that waste of time and that bad memory of recording an episode <laughs> that no one in our listenership will ever hear. We all convinced ourselves it was a dream. Yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you this right now. What? I have my copy of my recorded track. Yeah. I will be posting it on a Patreon site. You can buy it to help fund many things that I have to pay for. Yeah. It's one third. The best part is that one of the one thirds will never be listened to. Yes, that's true. And you have to find out whose that is. I'm saying it's not me because I'm selling mine. On your, When you post your file, Steve, yeah. will you post some kind of cryptic clues that lead to a link that goes Obviously. to the site some, where I will post mine. Some breadcrumbs. Mm. I got it. Let's make this deep. All right. A little scavenger hunt on social yeah. media. I like it. <laughs> this feels like uh, our own MCU. Yes. Or, or a we Blumhouse film. Yeah. Yeah. Right, or a right. Blumhouse film. Yeah. We had those phoners <laughs> and this is the Avengers. They're, they're like doing that shot where they're panning around all mm-hmm. the heroes. Somebody that does podcasting either that happens to listen to our show is getting a brilliant idea right here. They're <laughs> going to execute way better than we ever would be able yes. to. And it's going to be like the top rated podcast next year. Really? And we'll get zero credit for it. Well, the last time we uh, spoke to you, we did promise our next episode would be the Schmovie Awards. So to you, this might not seem strange at all. Weird. That this episode, I, that's, you know what that is that I just did? That's the least ceremonious announcement that this episode is the Schmovie Awards we've done. <laughs> Um, but I guess because of this lost episode, that we have to provide a little context. But but in between, we weren't able to meet for, you know, stuff came up and we weren't able to meet in person. And we said, well, let's just get on the phone. And instead yeah. of doing the Schmovie Awards, let's just catch up. Right, and so right. we talked about a few topics that that felt like they were ripe for the picking. Some recent news, some movies we'd seen. It was the first episode in forever where we didn't mention a superhero i don't think it was crazy if you are listening and you wish that we didn't talk about superheroes and you're like why don't they talk about the smaller films and catch up on some news we did that we did that but but you'll never be able to hear it so just take our word for it it happened it was a good time it was and you'll never hear it but you know what for us it was a great opportunity just to get on the phone and talk for yeah. about an hour and a half about movies it's which as is- if we were just, just get together and talk about movies yeah. anybody listening that thinks that we are such good friends that we must talk about stuff all the time in between episodes. We don't normally. So it, that was actually like a rare yeah. opportunity to yeah. just kind of catch up. But we say all that just to say that now here we are in the actual uh, 212. Yeah. And this is, and now let's put a little ceremony behind there it. There it is. The sixth annual. Holy. What is it, Ronald? Schmovie Awards. The Schmovie Awards. <laughs> Last year, we celebrated the fifth annual Schmovie Awards, yeah. and it, we kind of, uh, it felt like this was a good year to maybe bring in some new categories, put some put some old friends out to pasture, maybe find a new spin on a few things. So I hope, right. hope people out there find this to be uh, a good batch of categories. I know cool. I can tell you guys, as the prime representative of Price Walker House Schmooper, the results <clears throat> are in. There were a few surprises. I will say this year, there was less consensus 
than oh, any nice. year in memory. That's kind of incredible. That's really nice. I like that. It made it made uh, tabulating the results for each category kind of exciting. Like, wait, wait, no, what? Because mm. one that I would think would have a really low number, which would mean it would be winning, would have such a high number that I would think something's going to squeak in underneath wow. it. So yeah. So there's some there's some upsets. There's some surprises. There's our first ever double tie. Damn. Oh wow. But here we are. I don't know how you guys are feeling. I, we usually take this opportunity to kind of say a little something about. Mm. The year, the, the the films that linger in our minds. I know we've already done our best of last year, but is there any theme or anything that kind of emerged in your mind when you look back at 2017? Is there anything that, that stands out as a as an arc to the year? Personally, I just like how widely accepted a lot of genre films were, yeah. mm-hmm. just in terms of box office receipts. It's really amazing to see... Um, you know, some Academy Award nominations from movies like Get Out and Logan and Blade Runner, Shape of Water winning Best Picture, like um, box office juggernauts like, you know, It, you know, and Get Out and, you know, Logan. I mean, it's just, it was a really cool year um, for that kind of stuff. Thor Ragnarok, War for Planet of the Apes, just lots of really big, not that those things don't exist in the box office every year, because if you look ahead of this summer or this, you know, coming winter, like, you know, what the supposed Oscar films are or whatever. Mm. They're always present. But, I mean, last year just felt like a really special year for genre, different voices. Right. What about you, Ronald? Um, movies are coming out at a pretty alarming rate on everything. Yeah. You know, Amazon's putting out stuff, Netflix is putting out stuff. And then you have all the indie movies, and it just is a incredible amount of content that's coming out, and it's a little overwhelming. Um, and But the good part is it seems like the window from theater to video on demand seems to be a little smaller Mm -hmm. for some movies specifically like the indie ones it it used to feel like when an when a smaller movie came out you had to wait damn near a year for something to come out especially when it like would miss your town yes it doesn't feel like that anymore it feels like it's coming out within six months of you you know coming out of theater if not if not in some cases like the same day and date everything's gotten a little shorter it's yeah. quicker to get to streaming and home video, but also it seems like it's quick, quicker to get to our little town. It's our, weird because our like, little non-select in, in, city. In some ways, yes, I think you're right. It has kind of changed. Um, the window has gotten smaller in terms of how long it takes for it to roll out to whatever they deem to be major cities or even minor cities. Mm. Whether you're consuming it in a theater or on a streaming platform like you, all of us use pretty prevalently. It's it's really interesting to see that that window has closed a lot. You yeah. know, like major releases that come in theaters now, like they're usually on some sort of either physical media or streaming platform within three months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is crazy. It is crazy. You could actually, I mean, a theater, a small theater could even source information in a really like cheap way. You could go, you could say if you have six films you're thinking about putting putting into the theater mm-hmm. and you maybe out of those six, you want to pick three. You could literally go to the YouTube channel of those movies. Yep. Mm-hmm. Look at oh, this has fifty thousand views. This one has a hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. Let's do that one with a hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. It's it's interesting it's that like information, and people don't think about sourcing the information the way that you know I just thought of or something like just kind of just on the fly. You are brilliant. But, thank you. Why don't you run a studio? <laughs> I, don't, I have no idea. <laughs> or rather, a theater. <laughs> but yeah, the, the the fact that you yeah. can there's so much information that's readily available. You can take that. And and kind of make some decisions on what you think would be good for your theater impact that it will make and stuff like that is a pretty cool thing. You know who's trying to completely disrupt that? Who? Movie Pass. Yes. Because what beyond what you think of Movie Pass, right. and I don't want to spend too much time on this, but what you just described <laughs> as like a theater having information, mm. whether they're looking at YouTube mm. or they're buying analytics from Movie Pass or whoever it might be, like that kind of thing is like super valuable to a theater you know like oh we should book the romantic comedy because in this zip code demographics of 18 to 35 they eat up romantic comedy so let's book that one instead of the the dark thriller you know whatever like that's what they're aiming to do by tracking smart what you see when you see it why you didn't pick the other one weird shit like that but that's pretty interesting you're, you're right it's crazy yeah Getting creepy, Movie Pass. <laughs> yeah. Still, still using you. Um, I don't know if I should admit this publicly. Maybe Movie Pass has got minions out there. Uh-huh. But I went to go see Wrinkle in Time with uh, with my son yesterday, and it was Tuesday when mm-hmm. they do early bird pricing until the matinees are over, and it was a four twenty showing. So you know we were lighting up. Yeah. No, no um, <laughs> it was a four twenty showing. So we were under the wire for the matinee, uh-huh. and I checked in and I got up to the counter and I said. 
I'll put one on the movie pass card and I'll put the other one on my card. Yeah. And she ran the movie pass card and paid for both tickets. Oh shit. Like two tickets were I guess because of the the you're early bird gonna, pricing. You're probably gonna email in two right. weeks like you violated the terms but of service. But I think like there's a set amount. I think it's like fourteen bucks or yeah, something. Because yeah. you know, it won't pay for it won't pay for X D yeah. or IMAX or or three D. Yeah. So I think there is a limit that it pays <clears throat> that is the roughly the price of like yeah. a weekend night ticket. And I think it just unlocks that amount. And I was actually what was weird was I've wanted to test that before, but I was actually saying to her no, go ahead and just put this on the movie pass card, and she ran it. And I saw it come up, and I was kind of, I kind of looked around. And I turned to Henry, and I was like, "Keep hey, going, just run, <laughs> run." <laughs> That's really cool. But yeah, so I don't know. I did not. If if movie pass is listening, we still want the sponsorship. Yeah, we're still perfectly happy with your drones yeah. following us around and right, right. shooting us with lasers or whatever I've they're got doing. An implant. I got <laughs> yeah. done. Last week. It's getting to that point, man. You well, guys want to get into some categories? Let's do it. Let's, do it. Yes. Let's get it rolling. Right. First category for the 6th Annual Schmovie Awards. As always, you start with the big one. Yeah. Just like the big dogs. <laughs> Whose year was it? Um, these are nominees that we rated from most dominant to merely awesome. Caleb Landry Jones. He was in American Made, Friday Project, Three Billboard. I think I meant to say Florida Project. Three Billboards, Get Out, and Twin Peaks. Timothy Chalamet, Lady Bird, Call Me By Your Name, and Hostels. Lucas Hedges, Lady Bird, and Three Billboards, outside of Evan, Missouri. <clears throat> Samara Weaving, Smilf, Three Billboards, <clears throat> Mayhem, and The Babysitter, and Tracy Letts, The Post, Lady Bird, <clears throat> and The Lovers. All great actors. I do want to see a movie called The Friday Project. That yeah. sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> Mash up Friday and the Florida Project. <laughs> the Friday Project. Yeah, you're what saying that here like? that I just copied and pasted what you yeah. sent me and didn't correct it. Or yeah, anything. that's nice. Um, you came up with a really some really good suggestions for this category. Thanks, man. But yeah, the idea of someone who's been in a lot of things this year, I think that mm. Caleb Landry Jones would seem Crazy. to be the winner based on that. <laughs> yeah, but, right. But how did we feel about that kind of Q rating that he got from it? Here's the winner. Ronald, you usually do a terrible drum roll. Wow. <laughs> I'm shocked right now. <laughs> Samara Weaving. Oh yeah, wild card. That's a good one. I yeah, she had my number one vote. Yeah, same. Did she really? Yes. That's awesome. Cause I, I, I was, I, I was, love her. I see her and everything. I'm like, she's she's great. Yeah, she's so good. She's really good. So she's all over the place. Is this like, is she coming up in something really big? I didn't really look to see. I, I wanted um, to check with all these people. I like, what's so, next? Because this would kind of seem to be Timothy Chalamet's year in a lot of ways. She yeah. does have. I don't. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, but she does have. I think like at least two to three things mm -hmm. coming out this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, just with her. Um, if you haven't watched Smilf yet, definitely check that show out. It's pretty incredible. That's really on cool. Showtime. Yes. Um, but the one, the two that stand to me are Mayhem and The Babysitter, both kind of crazy fun movies. Um, one maybe better than the other, but <laughs> she plays one of the leads in both of them, and I think in both films she's pretty, just magnetic and just like you. I'm I'm just completely watching her the whole film. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I'm 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 stoked that she won that award. Cool. First winner of the year. First winner of the year, and there I would is. say an indicator of what I think we What's were all surprised yeah. by that outcome. This is that yeah, kind of night. It's gonna be a crazy oh, yeah. night. It's, it's gonna be a crazy night. All right. So the next category is best world building and design. Given to the movie so well visualized, you feel like you stepped right into it. All right, into the so. movie, not into a pile of shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's the opposite of that. <laughs> and this was rated from transformative, transportive. You know, I've never heard You don't this. have to say that part. I just oh, meant like okay, positioning gotcha, gotcha. the category. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So the categories, the, the nominees are Coco, Blade Runner, 2049, Thor Ragnarok. The Florida Project, War for the Planet of the Apes, and the winner is Coco. Woo! I didn't mean to step on the window. What did you say his drum roll sounded like? A like a a bad impression of a car engine starting over. Like somebody going to Jiffy Lube and be like, my car sounds like. Kind of sounds like Michael Winslow. Describe what's going on with your car. It's kind of like. It's like Michael Winslow when he was a kid and he yeah. was learning. And, he, and someone said, "You start with an outboard motor on a little boat." That's everybody's starting point. Or like when a baby's like making. So it is a surprise you. I mean, Coco definitely. I think one of the things we all said about that movie was 
it kind of got Pixar back into that yeah. spot of seeming like they are going to it was like a perfectly realized vision of something that yeah. they really explored and it really did feel developed and it you know that it, it always feels very much like it's been through a million uh, development stages and sometimes that can take the life out of something but yeah. that was one where it did have some magic and you Absolutely. did kind of get lost in that idea of that world so it felt like a it felt art like an art project it felt like they didn't have to ever do anything like this ever and they still would have been very very successful yeah. but the fact that they chose something that was uh, you know about a, a background that we aren't typically familiar with is a pretty big chance, and I, it worked out. It was the moment he walks in to that mm -hmm. afterlife area, you know, that world. It's just it. It's beautiful. I think it's that word that you said you haven't heard. Yeah. I think it's transportive. Yes, <laughs> it's transportive. Um, I was going to say transportative, but which means kind of that it seems like it should have Jason Statham in it. Exactly. Yeah. Isn't that what transportive means? Yes. It's exactly what yes. it is. Always. Um, well, this next category is kind of a throwback to the days before I was even on the show. You guys used to do a little something called the Mighty Minute. Yeah. Where mm. you would start off a show with some thoughts. And I think maybe it was essentially, if you'd seen a movie and Ronald hadn't, that yeah. would be a great opportunity for, for that. Yeah, just a quick breakdown. We should bring that back. Well, I think tonight might we be might be bringing back might... a form of it. Oh, man. Um, Tiptoeing this... in the water. This uh, category or award is called Three Mighty Minutes, and this is awarded to the movie from 2018 that we haven't covered, but which deserves a three-minute segment, um, which basically means sort of in a Voltron-like fashion, we are combining our Mighty Minutes yeah. into one greater Three Mighty Minutes. Cool. Into one yeah. Three Mighty Minutes. One? Into, into a Three Mighty Minute chunk <laughs> of Minutes of Mighty. Ultimate Minute Tripod. <laughs> You can see we triptych of minute. Mm. Yes, trident. Yes, yes, a trident. Quite the trident. Yes, quite the trident. <laughs> a minute megazord. Set your watches on trident. <laughs> um, and uh, so yes, these are movies that we basically what we were already talking yeah, about. Yeah. Not only did we lose an entire episode where we may have talked about some of these films, <laughs> right. but also we just haven't had a chance, or we haven't compared yeah, notes, or yeah, we haven't all yeah, seen them. Right. So these are major films that have come out recently <clears throat> that were nominated for the three mighty minutes treatment. Mm -hmm. Wrinkle in Time, Paddington 2, Isle of Dogs. You get it that it's like, I love dogs, Me Ronald? Too. Did you Me get too. that? Yes. I wanted to say that, but I didn't want to say it to somebody who would be like, what are you talking about, you piece of shit? I heard people saying like, oh my God, I didn't know that. And to me, <laughs> I anything that... anything I yeah. love, yeah. that's what it's a reference yeah, yeah, yeah. to. Weird. Uh, Isle of Dogs. Pacific Rim Uprising. In a quiet place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the winner, and I would say the only unanimous winner of our awards tonight Damn. was a quiet place. All right, guys, I'm turning the timer. And now we've got three minutes to talk about John Krasinski's A Quiet Place. Who wants to open up? Uh, Time's a wasting. We just wasted three seconds. What did you yeah, think yeah. of the movie, Steve? I loved A Quiet Place. Yes. It is my favorite movie of 2018 thus far. And... Uh, I would say if there's a film in theaters that you're looking to see and you haven't already seen it, mm -hmm. please go see the movie while it's in theaters. Um, I got asked a really interesting question from a friend of mine. was like, dying to see the movie, do you think it's worth seeing in the Dolby screen, which is like known for its sound? Right. The answer was yes. Mm. Even though it's a movie where there's not a lot of dialogue, the movie relies a lot on American Sign Language and... You know, that's a big element. That's a nice angle for the film. There's such incredible sound design in the film that when... It hits, you want to feel it, and you do. Even in the theater that we saw it in, I can only imagine, though, mm -hmm. seeing it in like an IMAX-type theater. It's not in, but if it's in a Dolby Cinema near you, see it there if you can. Incredible character work. John Krasinski's great in it. The kids are amazing. Emily Blunt is one, probably the standout of the movie, especially for one scene, which you've seen in the trailer and is on the poster for the movie. But um, can't say enough good things about it. I absolutely loved the film. Cool. What, do you, what do you think, Ronald? Uh, best use of space that I've ever seen in my life. Which, <laughs> <laughs> um, Did we get that? I don't know if we were recording when yeah, we yeah. talked about that. Uh, get Out. Ronald speaks in superlatives. I do. Get Out of 2018. Yes. Um, it is. So for all the smart horror film buffs, you are not smarter than this movie. You will not be able to guess the beats. You will not be able to guess when something jumps out. Because all the things that you know, all the things you've come to love have been stripped from that. And that is one of the things that is worth seeing alone. So it's 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 definitely a great film. Check it out. You have to see it in a the theater. You got to experience it that way. But if you don't, it's going to be great on, you know, at home as well. So 
I will second that, uh, I guess thirding it, because Steve nodded when you said it, so he already seconded. The idea that you got to see this in the theater, a, a crowd will quiet down, you will hear yes. someone rustling their, their snack wrapper, you will hear someone adjusting in their seat. There'll be moments where yep. you and everyone in the theater will be holding your breath at the same time. Oh, yeah. Uh, no one quite has yet mentioned the themes of the movie that make it so resonant. You mentioned oh, yeah. that it is this year's Get Out, and my first thought when I formed that thought, well, because it's John Krasinski, much like Jordan Peele, being known for comedy and then directing a genre piece, mm -hmm. and it's around the same time of year. But I was like, Get Out had this social relevance, and I didn't know if this movie did, but the more I thought about it, and especially after seeing it a second time, I think the, the social relevance of this movie is the universal theme of family, oh, yeah. and especially the sort of horror show of being a parent in the world today and trying to find joy and trying to find little moments of peace and love that you can express in a world that feels increasingly dangerous. Obviously, we don't have aliens uh, stalking us in the real world, but um, this movie, I still think, kind of relates to those themes. Sure. And I just want to say quickly that I think the backlash is a bunch of bullshit, and if people want too much of an explanation for what's going on behind this movie, they would it would ruin the movie. It would. That was a good little... <sighs> we need to do this on future episodes. Yeah. Yeah. That's fun. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, it's something about... I always like doing that. We, we really gathered up our thoughts really quickly. I like that. It Dig helped that... It. It helped that we already had that conversation. <laughs> yeah, we like went over the yeah. stuff already. Yeah. Um. So where are we? Oh, number four. Here we go. Next category is better them than we. Or Basically. Me. Oh, or or. But or it works me. for we. Yeah, better them than me. I was trying to include you guys. Yes, I know. That Appreciate works. that. <laughs> um, this is the worst death category. We got Pennywise welcomes Georgie to the sewer in it. Death by Pencil in John Wick 2. John Ortiz's character being torn apart in midair by monster birds in Kong Skull Island. <laughs> Snoke gets halved like a chump in Star Wars The Last Jedi. Spoiler yeah, alert. There's a few spoilers tonight. <laughs> Reaver Goon, whose face gets skewered on Logan's claws in Logan. You remember that guy? The claws come out the top of his yep, head? Yep, yes. Yep, yep. Was that the slow motion scene? It's the scene where he's yeah. in the casino. God, I love this scene. All right. What well, we got? Who's our winner? Let me see. Let me see. Let, that let, win Price, Wark, Price Walker House. Too busy posting uh, selfies of social media over here. <laughs> Longest drum roll ever. <laughs> we all float down here. Pennywise welcomes Georgie to the sewer and it. Yeah. Um, yeah, shocking perhaps because yeah, you're not used to seeing something like that happen to a kid in a movie. Yes. And the movie lingers on it in such a way that is like, it is a little mean spirited. It is. But it does the job. Yep. Similar to a, a scene in in a quiet place that sort of lays down what the stakes are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I yeah. like when movies do that. I like I don't I mean I don't I don't want to see bad things happen to innocents, but I do think it's a great way to show you this movie's not playing on the rules that you are accustomed to. And this, yeah. especially in the case of it, this movie's not going to treat children the way that most horror movies treat children. Absolutely, I've said it before, and I'll say it again: kids must die in the movies. I mean, yeah. they can't be exempt. You know what I mean? It's not that they should be the victims all the time. It's yeah. just. The stakes are weird of like a, a thing is like skipping over. I like that. And Absolutely. It shows you how heartless a character is. And it's cool, you know, to see a movie like that finally get like, you know, a theatrical release that is an R rating and they didn't shy away from showing too much. And oh, yeah. I mean, you being able to see the kid's arm get ripped off and dragged in. That was gross, man. Yeah, it's cool. It's an awesome scene. <laughs> it's gross. And they went for it and I love it. I can't cool. wait for the next part. Me too, man. All right. So the next category is least necessary franchise entry. In the world where franchises are taking everything over, sometimes mm. you think they're going to make more of these. <laughs> but some, some of them seem more important, more necessary than others, right? right? right. The nominees are Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Justice League, The Mummy, Pitch Perfect 3, Fifty Shades Freed, Star Wars The Last Jedi, and Boo 2, A Medea Halloween. And the winner is... The least necessary franchise entry of 2017... Boo 2, a Medea Halloween. Uh, let's be honest. Did anyone see it? No. <laughs> no. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, would you like to know what the, according to our tabulations, what the most necessary sequel? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, it was Star Wars The Last Jedi. Obviously. Interesting. And I, I realized in my own ranking, it was, it was the one that I put in least, I think because Star Wars... It's like any entry in the main franchise is sort of a load-bearing entry. Yeah. You yeah. can't really make the same argument you could over a straight sequel when it's like the next chapter of a continuing story. Yeah. 
and Star Wars is still continuing from the very first movie. It's not like a franchise where they they they're constantly rebooting and retooling. So I'm kind of looking forward to the once that's done, and then all these like other projects in the world come out. I'm I'm looking forward to that. I'm just afraid of how many people they've announced that are supposedly doing yeah. trilogies or TV shows or a series of films. It sounds like It sounds nuts. But I mean when you think about what Marvel is trying to do as far as loading up the the slate with, you know, 20 possible movies going forward. With Star Wars, it's weird to think of it in terms of those numbers, but they're trying to do the same thing. Yeah. So, if you're thinking 10 years from now we will have seen 10 more Star Wars movies. That's a little crazy. Yeah. It is crazy. But that means that's how you have room for Benioff and Weiss from Game of Thrones and Ryan Johnson. Right. And maybe a person of color if, you know, the stars ever align over right. there at Disney. Let's see what happens. Film. All right. Well, back on the franchise train for just one more category here. This one is called When the Money Machine Breaks Down, the most doomed franchise. I couldn't come up with a, the right word for that. So doomed is the only I like word doomed. I used. But I feel like everybody, every one of these big franchises that is ruling the multiplex right now, it's got to it's gotta fall at some point. Right, right. What's it going to be? So right now we're assessing the major ones. I realize I forgot Star Trek. Um, but the big major franchises, although I guess it's never been a moneymaker like some of these others. Right, right. right. Um, so these are all big franchises, and I'm going to give a quick uh, underlining of what some of the issues surrounding that franchise might be. Mm. Uh, the first nominee for When the Money Machine Breaks Down, the most doomed franchise, is the Fast and the Furious franchise. This is uh, being fractured because there's all these feuds going on. Vin Diesel and The Rock are are constantly you know, talking smack about each other, and then Tyrese is just going off and saying whatever. I don't think that means it doesn't help the movie out in some way in terms of publicity. Mm. I just wonder at what point do egos get to be too big for, for there to oh, be yeah. the same ensemble cast, at least. Maybe it'll all be spinoffs. But it does kind of seem like they might be diluting it. The Star Wars franchise, obviously it's very healthy, but The Last Jedi spawned a weirdly heavy amount of vocal fan backlash. I don't think it really hurt the movie in terms of uh, critics or box office, but that does seem like it's a it's a dangerous element. And it seems like Star Wars could actually put out a movie that half of its fan base doesn't like now, right. which is very strange. Or at least half of the people that tweet angrily. Yeah. And a big question I have is just has Disney take, taking something that was special and ruining it by overexposing it? Uh, the MCU... Everybody seems to like what Marvel's doing, but that's got to change. A lot of people do complain about the fact that the films have a house style. I just wonder if, A, that Black Panther sets up a bar that's impossible for anything else to reach. I, I yeah. think that right now Infinity War looks like it's going to have a huge opening. I don't know if it's going to have the same repeat business Black Panther did. So the big question there is, is just is a flop inevitable? And what's that going to look like for Marvel? Right. The DC that's Universe? The D yeah, it is. The, the DC Extended Universe, all they got to do is take these big characters that people like and make a movie that people like mm -hmm. it seems like they've sort of gotten a little bit closer and right now they have matt reeves working on a batman film and james wan who we like might be doing something cool with aquaman don't know if that means there's hope but definitely the dc extended universe seems like one that is the most talked about the danger that it's in but maybe they could do something amazing and pull it out i don't know if you guys have much confidence i guess we'll find out uh the harry potter franchise I guess we're still calling it Harry Potter, right? What do we call it? The Wizarding World of Harry Potter? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, I was sort of disheartened when I noticed this new series that they have is when they said this is the first in a five-film series, my heart kind of sank a little bit. That's so many films. I just don't know if I trust that idea of starting off with a story that you're going to – you're saying right yeah. out that you're going to turn it into five films. Plus, they have a Johnny Depp problem. People are tired of Johnny Depp. There's a lot of kind of other reasons why people are disenchanted with him these days, and they really are leaning into it with everything they say about the upcoming film in which he plays a major role. So, Which brings us to the final nominee, the James Bond franchise. I don't know if you guys are big Bond fans. I kind of follow it without being a huge yeah, fan I mean, of it. Yeah, I kind of follow it too. Um, I think they've had some great fortune with Daniel Craig. People love him, but he obviously won't last forever. But I also just think James Bond as a character ages poorly. The more you look back on what he represents, it's right. not something that modern audiences really want to embrace. So those are our six franchises. Mm. Which franchise is most doomed? <laughs> you know, I said The Quiet Place was our only unanimous uh, entry, but actually oh, I was a little bit wrong because uh, the DC Extended Universe <laughs> is the it's most doomed true. franchise according to Movie Schmovie. What yeah. makes it, even if it is possible to maybe have a Hail Mary and pull something out with a great film, why does it still feel doomed? I mean, I think because they failed in their approach already. I think the idea that they tried to create a universe. So we can talk about franchises that are movies that, like, you know, don't exist in the same universe, maybe, you know, but are maybe coming out. If, if DC was just releasing superhero films mm -hmm. that some were good, some were bad, 
It would be that. Like, they would make money still. Right. But the fact that they went out of the gate, tried to basically do what Marvel did over a decade in the course of two, three years, I think it's going to bite them in the ass because trying to make a world that these characters all live in, Mm -hmm. I think is what has already failed. And that failed very loudly with Justice League. Right. So even if the Batman is cool and a good movie, even if Aquaman has something going for it that's unique, I don't think that those movies are going to be seen as the DCEU that they wanted them to be. Mm-hmm. They will yeah. just be standalone good movies, much like Wonder Woman is embraced as. Yeah. People aren't saying Wonder Woman, oh man, it's like that world is saved now. It's, oh, that was a good uh, superhero movie. Like yeah. They need to do more of that. They should have done yeah. more of that and then let it into a Justice League so that you actually cared about the characters that are huge, iconic things. And to me, it just feels like they already, like, shit the bed. Mm-hmm. You know, they've already kind of blew their chance with it. You know, I think they can still succeed in making these good movies. Yeah. I have very high confidence that I'm probably going to like the Batman, and I'm going to probably like Aquaman. Yeah. Because I like the filmmakers, and if they kind of give them a chance to make the movie they want to make without having to shoehorn it into a Justice League film mm-hmm. in two years... It's probably going to be a better product in the end. Yeah. So they can be good movies, but I think the idea of a DCEU as a franchise is is I personally see that it's like kind of a a lost thing. Yeah, they can personally. almost back away from it gracefully if they do what you said. If they yeah. just make a few good movies, then it'll be like, hey, remember that awkward start a couple of years ago when they tried to do this thing? Yeah. Yeah. It's weird, man. I agree. I think they should just do just make individually good movies. It's earn and, it back. Earn yeah, it back. Yeah. Because the thing is like. Um, the the crossover aspect of it is just something that it is. It's always been, you know, a Batman story that has Superman in it on yeah. occasion, a, a, a Wonder Woman story that has yeah. Superman in it. Th- there's nothing wrong with just having a, a great story and maybe somebody shows up. Pops in up, it. Yeah. yeah. And then and then eventually the connections between the people will just <clears throat> equal whatever the world that they want to create. Um, trying to replicate a model that's already been done doesn't work yeah. you know they should they should just try a new, a new approach mm-hmm. i don't know what that's going to be but they should try something yeah. because there's there's a there's a million ways to do a connecting world and it's okay if they do it a little different than marvel mm-hmm. so moving on number seven okay and the next award is shit got uh shit that got real get out edition <laughs> and the nominees are Rose got gut shot, then strangled, then left to bleed out. Miss Arda Arda Armitage. Oh, why am I saying it like this? Miss Ar- Armitage sends Chris to the sunken place. You can say Catherine Keener if that's easier. That's the actress. <laughs> right. uh, Andrew Logan King, played by Lakeith Stanfield, tries to warn Chris at the party. Rose isn't really looking for the keys. Every excruciatingly awkward thing Bradley Whitford does. Every creepy thing that Caleb Landry Jones does. And the winner is... That car just won't start, man. There it is! Push me down the hill, let me pop it in a second. Rose isn't looking for those keys. She's not looking for those keys. She's not looking for those keys. Damn. She's looking for some black brains. <laughs> <laughs> that was close to unanimous. That was that okay. was a, that was one of the few that we were very very close on. We weren't quite unanimous. And on I screwed it. it up. Perhaps you did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I I don't think something is more iconic in that film than Chris going to the sunken place. That is an iconic. Yeah. Like the sunken place is something that will be referred to. Mm-hmm. Like forever in film iconography, yes. like you know what it is when you somebody says that. See, I agree. That's why it was my number two. The reason why Rose digging in the digging in the purse was my number one is because when she drops the ruse mm-hmm. was the final like stomach drop of the film. That yeah, was the yeah. moment where you realize he's alone. Mm. You know, up till that moment, you've been teasing this notion of, well, how much is she really in on it and how much does she really want to? And so, yeah, that is the moment where it becomes, at least for him, too, totally real yeah. that, you know, everyone's crazy and they're all out to get him. I've seen it replicated one time and it was perfect. What? It was in Blackish. Oh, they did this. So they were having years. a conversation. The mom and dad were having a conversation. And he's like, uh, she's like, you know, your, your daughter's having sex. He's like, what? He's like, 
she's having sex. He's like, no, 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 no. He's like, he's like <laughs> and then he's sinking into the song. It looked incredible. It was like almost. Wow, that's awesome. Shot by shot. He did Perfect. like the no, 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 I just think that Jordan Peele like created like an, uh, a forever thing. Yeah. With not only that film, but yeah. I mean like whether it's the rose with the yeah. keys or like there's so many scenes that are just like I feel like legit forever scenes. And you'll see them you'll see them replicated. Yeah. It's it's a part of like pop yeah. culture like you know imitate it, replicate it, you know, you know, for, I would even for say comedy or for seriousness. Mm-hmm. I would even say that's more powerful because he did that. He was taking stuff that yeah. was out there and in the ether with horror and with genre and like crystallizing it into yeah. something and it, it's almost like a movie gets to come along and take all those elements and use them and if you're a genre fan and there probably are genre fans that are very like it wasn't so original I know this movie did that but like he managed to coalesce it all into yeah. this form and and what you're saying Steve is very true for the foreseeable future he'll be associated with those elements yes. you, know? you want to do a film where somebody hypnotizes somebody and sends them to some other place well As- exactly. people are going to say that's like the sunken place yeah. even if he's not the first person to come up with it he like it's so it's, yeah it's got a lot of iconic things about it definitely and I don't think you can do that by accident no, but you also no. can't be sure you're doing it I mean <laughs> I just after seeing A Wrinkle in Time and seeing how much that movie with all the goodwill behind it and all the effort to make it something special, it was just not quite clicking in a lot of ways. Mm. It made me think about how precious that is when yeah. movies click because you can have all the talent in the world and it can still not come out. Definitely. So. Next category. The next category is the most pleasant surprise. So this is the award it to uh, a very special film that we didn't see coming. The nominees are Brigsby Bear, Good Time, The Florida Projects, Gerald's Game, and A Ghost Story. And the winner of the most pleasant surprise, the most pleasant surprise of 2017, Brigsby Bear. Brigsby Bear! Brigsby Bear! So yeah, sweet film. <clears throat> very. So good, man. Cried like a baby. <laughs> it was a very good movie. You know, Kyle Mooney's got an interesting comic energy to it. He him. does, man. Like, there is something... I think he was perfect for playing this kind of childish character that he played in that. But I think he's pretty funny. I mean, I I, I don't know. I, I It seems like on Saturday Night Live, he's one of those guys who sometimes won't be on much at all. But yeah. when he is on, a lot of times, if especially late in the show, he gets to do one of those really weird sketches with, I think, Beck Bennett is yeah. his partner's name. Yeah. And some of those are great. I mean, I don't know. Those, those guys have a have a style. It's not quite like Lonely Island, but mm-hmm. it's like this thing that gets to exist within the you know, the house of what yeah. Saturday Night Live yeah. does. And aren't they like old friends or something? Like, don't I'm they go sure. way back? I'm not sure. I feel like they came to the show as a. As I a think they were like at uh, Second City or something like that. One mm-hmm. of those places together. Yeah, I could have sworn I saw a picture of them, like young <laughs> back in together. The day, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Briggsby Bear. <clears throat> what do you think of the criticism that that film is a little too cute or a little too precious? I haven't heard that, and I disagree with it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> those people are bastards. <laughs> <laughs> You might even say they're grumps, Ronald, or that they're curmudgeons. Which brings us to our next award. It's a new uh, entry into transition to the schmoovies. Yeah, <laughs> segues. One of these days we're going to write some banter, and we're going to have that going for us. <laughs> uh, this is a new award, though, that is is the curmudgeon award or the ow that offends my delicate sensibilities award. And this is where we we assume the identity of sort of a scold, an old grump, and we look at the things that are kind of potentially ruining movies today, and and we'll decide which one is the worst one. And so there's a few nominees for the Curmudgeon Award. The first is, uh, I'm bothered by the highway robbery they attempt at the concession stand with their outlandish prices. And the second nominee is, these intellectually bereft Hollywood charlatans with their remakes and sequels. They sicken me, Ronald. They sicken you? Yes. Third nominee, the litany of nefarious but convenient phone applications that track me and abuse my data. Mm. You seem to know about this, Steve. You work behind the scenes at a media company. You know all about what they see. I know nothing. I know nothing. You're not allowed to say on microphone, but yeah. I know you know. I know you know the sites that I look at before I come to your site. We need to talk about that, and the by sites. the way. <laughs> How do I clear my web searches, by yeah. the way? All right. Next nominee for the Ow That Offends My Delicate Sensibilities Award. The ruffians in the theater with their chatter, their handheld devices, and their loud snack foods. Rappers and crunching, Steve. Mm, can't stand it. And the final nominee for the Curmudgeon Award, the abject buffoonery and immoral violence regularly projected on screens everywhere. <laughs> and the winner, 
You got a feeling about this? Anybody got a feeling what the what the winner might be? I have a strong feeling of what my winner is. This is a no-brainer for me. The highway robbery, they attempt at the concession stand with their outlandish prices. That was not my choice. I know, it was not mine either. <laughs> How the fuck did it win? I was is, going, is the math right on that? The, the math the is math right. Is right. Yeah. Um, I, I, I put the apps. I put the, the being tracked and abused. I put and, the disruption in the theater, the ruffians. That was my number two. I couldn't yeah. decide. Actually, I, that bothers me more in the moment, but I yeah. was trying to think more of society, and I do think it's more two was My two was the highway robbery, because yeah. it is pretty ridiculous. It's pretty yeah. ridiculous. Especially when mm-hmm. it's, it is the, um, as the, the aforementioned early bird pricing. Yeah, and the drink costs pretty much as much as the ticket. That's when it's That's really absurd. ridiculous. Yeah. No wonder people sneak things into the theater. Yeah, no wonder. No wonder. I just don't like it when it's a smell that tells me they brought something hot from home. <laughs> or I smell McDonald's French fries. <laughs> yeah, and I don't have any. They didn't bring home. any to me. Yeah, yeah. It's such a distinct Fox. smell, man. It really is. It really, it's, 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 I've never smelled a French fry that smelled like that. Besides, it's the most interesting smell you've ever smelled in your life, right? It's not a potato. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me that. T- there's no potato smell like that. That's strange. The the What's doubt. that on the horizon, guys? Is it a is it a new category? It is suggested by Ronald, I believe. The Schmeevious. Yes. TV shows that made us proud to stay home. Yeah. And the nominees are Stranger Things. I'm sorry. What would Diplo do? The Keepers. Playing House. Better Call Saul. Big Mouth <laughs> and American Vandal. And the winner. <laughs> Listen to that outboard motor go. It's the boat of results that just pulled up to the pier. <laughs> the winner, Stranger Things. Is anyone surprised that that was the the collective winner? I am a surprise. I am. You are just for the second season. Mm-hmm. Did you think the second season was as good as the first? Actually, I liked it a little better. I think it's really. As, I think it's as good, if not better. I like here's what here's where my better comes from on that, Ronald. I don't think it's, it's bad though. I don't think the second season is bad. I think I often give, I often give the edge to the first, whatever, because it's the first. But sometimes the first sets the stage for the second so well, and the second yeah. can hit the ground running because of the first. It's very true. And that's what I liked about Stranger Things too, is that it really did feel like first episode. I was running along with these characters, and it was just coasting on kind of what we said about the opening to Guardians of the Galaxy 2 when we did our right, MCU right, moments, right, right. is that there's a moment when something has when something knows it has the audience. Yeah. I love that confidence, and I feel like season two just exuded that confidence in storytelling yeah. and character. But but I agree, you kind of can't take away from the original blast that yeah. captivated people. And this is a year without uh, Stranger Things. Or Game of Thrones. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, two, mm-hmm. two very great shows. Being taken, but some from. might say that leaves a lane open for some great new yes. shows. Let's hope. Is anybody watching anything new or looking forward to anything new that's just blowing them away? Like Lost right now? in Space. Okay, so that's hot right now. I need to check it out. You need to see that. Um, I still need to watch Big Mouth, oh, which man. you've recommended. Unsolved the murders of Tupac and Biggie Smalls. I haven't watched that. I've heard it's good. Get out of here. <laughs> it is. I mean, it's corny as shit. Like there's some parts that are clearly very like. Yeah. You know, but the story is such an interesting thing. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in that. And then, uh, I started watching that Wild Wild Country, and I finally got into like the second episode. And it like what a crazy it got story. me more interested as it went along. At first, I was like, yeah. I don't know that I need six hours of this story. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, that series is pretty incredible. Yeah, no, but it, it, it once is. it once it we rolled along, it in a day. It's intensely good. Like I, I, I need to watch the second episode. No, I got about like I said, halfway into the second, I realized, okay, this is that Netflix. Documentary Docu- show series, thing again, yeah. where I'm yeah. just gonna watch this. I love how how bold that woman is. Mm-hmm. She just what? Yeah. yeah, suck my balls. Like I feel like she said. Like I feel like she <laughs> said pretty much kiss uh, tough titty. Yeah, <laughs> tough titty. She said pretty much everything under the sun. She's, she's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. Next category. Do, 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 do. <laughs> This category is called Creepazoid of the Year, parentheses Steve. <laughs> oh, that means I'm reading it. That's yes. right. That's right. I forgot. People should know I give Steve and Ronald uh, a ballot that has their name next to the awards that they're going to be presenting. I did not mean to put Creepazoid of the Year. I was nominated. Year, and then in parentheses, I was like, how do I not vote? Steve. But it is a nice little suggestion. Steve, how do you feel? Just what do you think your Creepazoid rating for the last year was? Um... I think you became more pure because you became a father. Yeah, I would say it went down. <laughs> yeah, it went down. It went down. That's good. Yeah, no, thanks. thanks. There's a point in a man's life where a creepazoid goes down, and then I've got bad news for you. It, it goes it, right it back goes up. Right back it goes up. Right back up. 
<laughs> I got you. So this is a category where we discuss creepazoids. Gotcha. I think a past winner was Paul year, Giamatti. Yeah, Paul Giamatti's one. He's like cool. a perennial. This year's category nominees are Mark Hamill in Brigsby Bear, and also Mark Hamill in Star Wars: The Last Jedi. <laughs> and that's it. Just the yeah. two. The only creepazoids on screen all year. Mark Hamill. Two rows. Two Very roles. True. So he creepy. really embraced his creepazoid in in both those roles. He did. His cranky old grump. I like that every scene in The Last Jedi, he, he looks like he just woke up. He looks like he just woke up yeah. in every... He's like, oh, what? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I like it. Where's that <laughs> <up> <laughs> <for> <laughs> 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 up to the pier. <laughs> Mark Hamill and Brigsby Bear. In Brigsby, Brigsby Bear. Bear. Was this unanimous or... <laughs> no, it was not. But I do think what he gets up to in Brigsby Bear is, is creepier than... Yes. In general. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Although... I don't know what's actually worse, raising a kid in an underground bunker and making I don't know if that's a spoiler. I think it is. <laughs> or, or is it creepy to uh, drink milk right from, <laughs> right from the teeth of some kind of scene. seaside yeah. creature? You know? Yeah, that was kind of gross. I might beep out those spoilers. <laughs> no need. No need. <laughs> that long beep, like the TV beep, like boop. Yeah. You should definitely do that stuff. Just sample the outboard motor and just run it over top <laughs> right. of it. So the next award is a returning award. Uh, last year we did the first time we did the Sloppy Openings Award. That's mm-hmm. the award for really basically the first two minutes of the show. We sometimes go on a bit of a journey. Sometimes it'll be technical difficulties. Sometimes it'll be awkwardness because we're on the phone. Sometimes it'll be catching up. Sometimes it'll be eating food and smacking into the microphone, whatever it is. The first two minutes of the show is often where we get rid of some extemporaneous business. And so I basically I listened to the first two minutes of every episode we did last year. And, and these were the ones that seemed to, in addition to being kind of interesting, over the course of them, they tell a little bit of a story about the kind of year we had. We were doing a lot of phoners. We were a little nervous about the quality of that. Um, there's, you know, things changing in our lives, things changing in the podcast. Mm-hmm. So that's what this category is all about: embracing what was the year for movie movie, and uh-huh. how to, and especially how that manifested those those openings. <clears throat> so the sloppy openings award given to the most inappropriate or interesting banter to occur in the first few minutes of the show. Nominee one came from episode one eighty seven, and it's a clip we'll call "Big Numbers." And this is movie movie episode one hundred and eighty seven. Yes, hello. I feel like now that we are actually at an impressive number, he's never impressed anymore. He's become I jaded. About numbers. I know, man. I'm here. He's spoiled. I'm, I am spoiled. Yeah. He's got that like celebrity vibe going. I was like, yeah, I went 187. Yeah, really. Like, now anymore. Maybe we're there's like, a certain point where, like, if we're at this high of a number and we're still doing what we're doing, <laughs> it's almost it becomes like it goes from being like something to be proud of to something to be slightly ashamed of. You know? <laughs> like, oh, sorry guys, 187. We're there. Yeah, we've been doing it this long. Yeah, we're there. (laughs) We're here. We're here for the long run. In episode 190, we had our next nominee. That was uh, something, I don't know if I really need to explain it. We'll just call this one, Let's Get Those Pants Off of You. But it was an episode where, right as we began recording, Ronald knocked some water over into my lap. It dried out. On your way to drying out? A little bit. A little bit. I'm sitting in a, in a wet cushion. I'm so sorry. With some wet breeches. And then some wet drawers underneath my breeches. I was trying to do a physical demonstration of how annoying sometimes doing stand-up can be. And I spilled some water into John's crotch. You gesticulated some water right yeah, onto me. which I feel like is the beginning of a porn. I feel mm-hmm. like that's how it, it starts. It could be. It's like, oh, let me... It would have to be something that's like not water. It would have to be wine or something that's going to set if we don't yeah, get those get off this of out you. Quickly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's get those pants off of you. Yeah, never ha- has happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, episode one ninety two point five gives us our next nominee. This is just one that I called awkward pause. This is kind of indicative of of what those phone conversations are like. This is going to be episode one ninety two point five. This is one of our. Uh, I don't know. Is is it? Are they infamous, or does anybody even notice that we do these things remotely, or do they care? I don't think so, man. I don't don't think they do. That that's partially probably because John is so good at masking the fact that we're not together. So what's up, guys? How you guys doing? Pretty good, man. Not bad. (laughs) See that awkward pause right there is where John would edit that. 
<laughs> and make it right. sound like we were together. <laughs> I mean, this time I'm going to have to leave it in just so that people know what we're dealing yeah. with. Right, here. right, right. Yeah. Uh, Life changes were the topic, and the next nominee from episode 196, this is one called I Saw a Roly Poly. Does anybody have any uh, any changes to report? Yeah. Anything <laughs> going on? Nothing? No? Uh, okay. My wife and I uh, welcomed a little girl into the world uh, on July 11th, 7 11. Uh, <laughs> so she'll be, she'll be set for life with free Slurpees, which is a good thing for her. I know. Um,. I got a I got a job and I'm gonna get a new doctor and I'm probably gonna move soon. It's damn. That's not as that's not nearly as crazy as a new baby, but it's still it's still pretty big, man. It's a lot of stuff, man. And I'm trying to adjust. Well, I guess this is a good time for me to mention to you guys uh, that I have just this afternoon weeded. Uh, about a third of the back uh, yard flower gardens. Damn. That's, that's incredible, man. Yeah, I know. You just came in. You just came in at the end with that bomb drop, huh? Right. Like right. you just kind of overshadowed all of us. <laughs> Some of us have big news. You guys have your little things going on, but you know, th- I've got real life going on. <laughs> Puts it into perspective. And I saw a roly poly. I saw several roly polies, as a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> a quick one from episode 197 this follows up on that idea of being impressed with the number and how it used to be ronald and maybe that could pass on to another person we'll call this clip the one who says wow so what is this 197 yes wow now i'm the one who says wow at the number (laughs) (laughs) wow Episode 200 was momentous for a lot of reasons, but uh, one of them was because Steve brought some sound effects. (laughs) That's what this clip is all about. (laughs) I've downloaded this app, and I've wanted to do this for um, what feels like months now as we've kind of tiptoed around episode 200. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's it's, it's so old and outdated, but I've always wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. Thank Let you. me tell you something. The <laughs> Jamaican you. air horn Thank will you. never get old. <laughs> I got an app and like, I love it, and it's got some cool sound effects on it. But I mean, when is that's always funny to me. Yeah. And episode two hundred, I just felt like I had to. I do Jamaican air horns bust. in my stand up, so like you should. It uh, they're stop. hilarious. It's hilarious, man. Thank you will you. always get me laughing. <laughs> it's also got something called the movie horn, which is very generic sounding, but it sounds like this. Oh my god! Mm-hmm. Oh, that's like, that sound that they make when they're showing all the danger coming, yeah, like War of the Worlds <laughs> yes. or Inception or something. They play that sound so much <laughs> that I've kind of gotten used to. You, oh, you mean like when danger comes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, right, danger's right. coming in episode two hundred, I hear. Now there was uh, an episode people might remember. We complained about the fact that uh, we had to make a phoner out of an episode that was supposed to be an in-person episode because there was some confusion. Ronald didn't make it in. Um, this is the opening to that. So I, I guess I didn't account for the idea that, hey, A, my, my day was crazy. And then it takes two hours for me to get from D.C. to Baltimore during rush hour. So I was like, I'm going to go home. And my brain was like, that is something I have to do. Something very important, but I couldn't figure out what it was. Oh, jeez. I feel like such a fool. Maybe this kind of giddy feeling we have right now of just how things have gone wrong, maybe that'll give us that that energy that we normally get from being face-to-face. Oh, yeah. Let's hope. Let's hope. I guess it didn't. (laughs) (laughs) So much for that theory. The next nominee, the final nominee for the Sloppy Openings Awards from episode 209. So this is proof that as recently as 209, mm. we were still having a bit of a rough time with these phoner episodes <laughs> and the rhythm of our patter. And this clip is called We Are Not in the Same Room. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Movie Schmovie. This is episode 209. And... Uh, this is Steve speaking right now, and uh, who this else is John here? speaking right I'm now. Ron. <laughs> <laughs> and if that's all you heard, you immediately know that we are not in the same room, and we are recording from our homes. And the winner of the second annual Sloppy Openings Award, episode two hundred four, 
The accidental phoner. <laughs> <laughs> I want to point out that all of these titles for these nominees, they could easily have been episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Ah! <laughs> I really like that show. I've been on a, a binge recently. I was watching all of them. I have them on my server. I don't know oh. that I know the uh, the show. Are you afraid? Of really? The from oh, from man. Snick, the no, Saturday I... Night Nickelodeon like block oh, of programming. Oh. I know what you're talking. It was about, like the yeah. midnight. Like these kids would meet in the woods and tell scary stories. Yeah, it's like the slightly scarier uh, goosebumps. goosebumps. Yeah, I know that because these all just, except maybe the, let's get these pants off of yeah. anyone. <laughs> Otherwise, they're all... <laughs> Unless there's some kind of demon pants that are stuck on the yeah, person. Yeah, that's, that's true. Case, yeah. that's and then you start angle. to take them off, and they realize that they're attached to their legs or something like yeah. that. Damn. Yeah. yeah. I stand corrected. They are all episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark? <laughs> so, yeah, if anybody out there is a budding... Uh, are, you, are you Afraid of the Dark? Yeah. Are you? Fanfic writer... Here's some titles for you. And in fact, I would even say the numbers of the episodes should correspond to like the numbers in the book series. Absolutely. Sounds good. Big numbers. Let's get these pants off of you. Awkward pause. I saw a roly-poly. That one sounds really scary. Yeah. The one who mm. says, wow. That actually takes on a... Yeah, yeah. that is weird. Mm-hmm. Sound effects. Uh-huh. The, the accidental phoner. And we are not in the same room. Kill Even it. scarier, we are in the same room. Yeah. yeah. Or are we? I don't know. Twists like that always mess with me. Even if I know what it is, I'm like, no, no. Rob just got real serious. He was like, wait, we're not? (laughs) We never have really known what the parameters of the the perennial category that we've had on the show, the fuck this movie or fuck that movie category, Mm -hmm. which usually is based around just that it's fun to hear Ronald list movies and then for us to see if we can determine how he feels about them by the way that he inflects fuck that movie. Yeah. And some movies he loves, some movies he mm. doesn't. I thought this was a good year since it was kind of the year of, of, of rooting out toxic men in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. There have been a lot of movies that are now tainted because we associate them with, with these disgusting guys. And I'm looking on the horizon like, who's going to be the next to fall? Who's, who's out there making an ass of themselves? Yeah. So I thought, let's come up with a category that follows up Fuck That Movie, yeah. but it also focuses on a year that we had. So this is a category yeah. called... Fuck That Guy. So, Ronald, you know what you're supposed to do. The nominees are David O. Russell, Fuck That Guy... Johnny Depp, fuck that stupid piece of shit guy. Mel Gibson, eh, fuck that guy. T.J. Miller, fuck that guy. (laughs) Dustin Hoffman, fuck that guy. James Woods, fuck that guy. Fred Rogers, fuck you. (laughs) Why why, why Fred Rogers? I don't know why. You just went for it on that last one. No, and the, I, I think you read it not even thinking who the name was. Right. I will say, you're I just think, like, the last one I'm going to just say, fuck you. Yes. I will say, I think I now know who it was that didn't rate Fred Rogers as the, <laughs> the least fucked. Yeah. I'm going to have to find out what Ronald's issues with Fred Rogers are. <laughs> but the winner is. And the winner of fuck that guy is. <laughs> Melly Gibson's. Interesting. Yep. Mel Gibson. So why do you think he rose to the top? T.J. Miller just phoned in a bomb threat. He's getting dropped from shows for being an asshole. He's got allegations. It's weird, though. I mean, I kind of agree, but I... I I feel like he's not, like, the level of, like, uh, Mel Gibson. No. Yeah. Johnny Depp kind of guy, you know. There's a lot of names on that list that are, like, Hollywood royalty. Arguably Hollywood royalty. Mm -hmm. T.J. Miller is in no way that person. Yeah, you know he gets work, yeah. and he's on a pretty successful show, mm-hmm. and has been in some big films. But I feel like he's kind of uh, the bottom of the totem pole still. Yeah, you talk about Mel Gibson and uh, you know Johnny Depp, basically everybody else on the list, with the exception of poor Fred Rogers. Um, it was either going to be him or Tom Hanks, th- right? Yeah. Th- thrown in yeah. as the sacrificial lamb. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good choice. Um, it just is—it's a further fall, I guess. Yeah. You know, from where they were. Is, is everybody else, now, especially Mel Gibson. What makes him so bad is that he emerges and he shows up at, what was it, Daddy's Home too. Yeah. I think that there's sort of a we don't want you back thing that kicks in. I know that sounds harsh, but like... Yeah, that it just made seemed, over $100 million. I yeah. know. it just, But that's crazy. I mean, it's weird yeah. to me that he's back and that maybe someone now is saying, hey, well, at least he's bankable. Just let's take note of the notion that some of the things he said on the phone in those messages was him at his worst being very angry. Yeah. But still, when you stack up what he's saying... It's some of the most heinous shit. <laughs> that like last year, be, being caught saying that would mean yeah, yeah. you're trash. Refer, referring to black people as a pack of people, a pack. I don't think he said people though. Yeah, no, he didn't <laughs> say people, but a pack. Yeah, is crazy. He's he's nuts for that. Roving around the city, <laughs> just, just clouds. <laughs> these fighting clouds like cartoons, getting it. It's, it's just stupid, man. He's a ridiculous person. So yeah. 
Fuck those guys. Fuck that guy. Fuck you, guy. <laughs> All right. Well, here is uh, the second to last category of the night. This is sort of a throwback. Last year, we did uh, an FMK category that had to do with the live action franchises that Disney is putting out. The... Uh, Marvel, Star Wars, and then their live action remakes. And I thought that was kind of a fun category. Let's let's do something that's based on that FMK, but now we are in the realm. We've we've kind of moved over to changing FMK to GHW, which is go for it. Oh go, go ahead. Hold up. Wait for it. Mm. And we have also had that kind of and sometimes why <clears throat> part of our scale, which is the you were warned scale. So this is a four level scale. G H W Y. Go ahead, hold up, wait for it. You were warned. Where we are going to be ranking where we go for our post-movie thoughts and conversations. I know that can seem a little abstract, but basically we're choosing between these four nominees. When we finish watching a movie, we get more value, we enjoy, we look forward to finding out what the conversation is in film criticism, like print reviews or online reviews. Film Twitter, which is a very fast-moving and very argumentative conversation that can be entertaining, but sometimes not much else. Talking with friends or film podcast. So, the winner... Of the GHWY for ranking post movie thoughts and conversations, it's a double tie. Wow, what? And what I mean by a double tie is talking with friends and film podcasts tied. And then so did film criticism and film Twitter. But yeah, so the tie there was talking with friends and film podcasts. So that's interesting because for Mm. us, making a podcast about movies is talking with our friends. I don't know, people out there listening, do you like talking to your friends more than you like listening to us? That would be the question. That's a very good question. And if you don't, if you like listening to us more than your friends, you Keep need to reevaluate to your no, friendship. <laughs> <laughs> no I'll, offense to us. I'm just saying, like, if you like, no fuck. offense to us. In the meantime, I'll offense. take it as a compliment. But yeah. you're right. You they need I mean? to get if, their life in order. If you like, <laughs> fuck my friend. Yeah. I'm going to listen to this podcast. That's that's cold blooded. Have you ever been around a group of people and wanted to consume something like that more than hang out with people though? Have you ever made the choice? I've definitely been around some people and wanted to jump out of a window like the Cowardly Lion, which I think is one of the most amazing scenes. The Cowardly Lion is <laughs> He jumps out the window. <laughs> what? Why would he do that? Sorry. Cuz he was scared. He I'm just reminded scared. of being in college and uh the kids in the hall was on CBS at that time and I think it came on at like 10:30 or 11:30 oh, wow. on Friday nights. Mm-hmm. I remember being at parties in college and like trying to like, do you have a TV in a bedroom, you know, or <laughs> and then like turning on the kids in the hall and getting people to be quiet. I mean, when I'm thinking about it now, it's like people were probably like, who is this fucking lame ass and who invited him to the party? But at the time I was thinking like, you know, because back then if you missed a show that came on CBS at 1130 on a Friday night, yeah, that was, that it. was it. you would hear people talk about it for years. Yeah. That was it. That's, That's the only time I can remember where I was actually saying to a room full of loud people yeah. having fun, hey, guys, pipe down. There's some, uh, some uh, you know, obscure sketch comedy that I like to enjoy. It was very rare that TV shows were on tape, too. I don't remember. I don't really remember shows being on tape. It was like a best of. It was they never would put like, out like a box of, yeah, yeah three That's or four the, episodes. Yeah, it would never be the whole thing. That's, yeah. That's annoying. Speaking of tape, I have a really interesting, weird story really quick. Uh-huh. I forget who it was last week. I think it might have been my girlfriend's brother's girlfriend my, my, my wife's girl my wife's brother's girlfriend wow my wife the doctor was a woman yeah yeah we were having dinner and we were talking about like just different old movies or whatever mm. it was the first time that i ever heard somebody she's younger obviously i think she's like 21 mm. so she made a comment that made me feel really old Ooh. but also very confused yeah because she referred to the actual set top box that you would play oh, no. a vhs tape on uh. as a vhs and I was like, is she like, I mean, I love her. She's a very nice girl. Yeah. Like, is she just like a little s- slow, like not knowing what she's talking about? Yeah. But then it clicked and I was like, that format, that kind of thing, like, it is so removed from yeah. their like, yeah. the, the the language, the definite, like, yes. that format, the VHS on a VCR. And I think of, okay, DVD, DVD player, Blu-ray, mm. Blu-ray player, LaserDisc, LaserDisc yes. player. Like, it's the only format that was like... Different terms. Yeah, like the term, yeah. the ac- you know, the acronyms were different, and it kind of was. Yeah, a like weird... if someone said, "Put that in the VHS player," that wouldn't have been right either. When she was yeah. saying it, I was like, "What are you talking yeah. about? Like a yeah. tape?" Yeah. And she's like, "No, you know the things you play mm-hmm. the tapes on." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, you mean a VCR?" And she had like, "What's a VCR?" Jesus. I was like, "Oh my god, I'm yeah. like, I'm only 36, and I feel even yeah. older now." Yeah, it was weird. I don't know. No, that I just is funny. To share that story. That's nuts, man. What's gonna be the next thing when somebody says something like, "What?" 
Well, what you discover the older you get is that shit just isn't used. It's like it's it's not like oh she's it's wrong wild, and she, she's wrong. wrong. She doesn't know this. It's like oh no, that's useless knowledge. Yeah, that's not part of the past. And it's like she doesn't need to be. I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't have yeah. had that thought, but yeah. it's just like no, she's not ever going to need to figure that out Never. because yeah. it's going to be completely irrelevant. Never. You know. Yeah. Like, I just wasted her time explaining yeah. it to her. Yeah. You know? That's when you realize you're an old man is yeah. when you've yeah. just said to somebody, hear me out, I want to explain this interesting tidbit to you. Right. That immediately. Yeah. And they're like, <laughs> out, what? Out their brain. Yeah. Out their brain. I had a conversation really recently about Netflix where somebody This can't was like, be relevant to you, and I know it. So let's talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's like, uh, well... I could just watch it on Netflix. I'm like, you know, some things aren't on Netflix. It happens all the time. That's a weird conversation. You like all they, the time, or I, they just say, "Is it on Netflix?" Yeah. yeah. I'm like, everything isn't on Netflix. <laughs> like Black yeah. Panther just came out. Is it on Netflix? <laughs> what? <laughs> like I'm, I'm, I watch it on Netflix. Like you're talking about like seven it, months from yeah. now, or if it ever comes right, on ever, Netflix right. at that point. Right. Yeah, that's true. Right. true. It's interesting, man. It's nuts, it's crazy. Man. All right, so we're to our final category. Final guys. category of the night. Home stretch. The big one of the evening. The schmooviest. This is the film that we loved that maybe the Academy didn't give as much love to as maybe we thought they should have. The nominees are The Big Sick, directed by Michael Showalter. Lego Batman, directed by Chris McKay. Thor Ragnarok, directed by Taika Waititi. The Disaster Artist, James Franco, director. Girls Trip, <laughs> Malcolm D. Lee, director. Stronger, David Gordon Green, director. Logan, James Mangold, director it Andy Machete I didn't say what he does <laughs> he's, a, he's just a guy John does not have to type in director you know what it was that dude. is I had to check to spell his name and I was so proud that I got it in there right that I didn't I didn't do the rest <coughs> so those were the nominees for the schmooviest and the winner here comes once again the last time we're pulling up to the pier Logan Logan, Logan. No but, surprise, but not not like a super low score, not like a three. So this was not a that was not a, a slam dunk for Logan. Interesting. This, this, we were all over the place this year. You know, I noticed a film that probably would have been on there, but it won uh, too significant of an award. Was Blade Runner twenty forty nine, but it got the cinematography uh, award, still which might have actually it. been more the Roger Deakins award. Wow. Still have not. But seen what's it. interesting about that is that meant that it shut uh, Denis Villeneuve out from being because he was I think he, three. Out of the five years that we've done the Schmovie Awards, he's had the the Schmoviest. Damn, so he couldn't true. be the Schmoviest this year because the Academy gave him a little some, too some much love. love, just a little bit. So that was it, guys. That's it, man. That's... That all sound, uh, that felt pretty good. I think as varied as some of the selections were, mainly that last one, like you were saying, a lot of it felt pretty uh, pretty in line with uh, what I feel like this show is. Yes. And I, now we're done looking back. Let's look forward. Yes. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for participating um, in some of the conversations that we have on Facebook. Um, we're trying to get it in as many ears as possible, and and we Spotify is a pretty big deal. We we, yeah. we we're like in a, in a, on a streaming service that you can get on your phone, yeah. on your laptop, on your Android devices, on your Apple devices, everything. So we're trying our best, and we appreciate the feedback that we've been getting. We appreciate. The, everything yeah and thanks for bearing with us actually last week we did intend to have that episode that we lost out that was the only real thing you may have noticed if you were if you if you are counting the weeks and you know right. we're supposed to be out once mm -hmm. every other week um last week we weren't so i appreciate you for hanging in Do, are we going to maybe put out the next episode next week just to kind of get get back on the right schedule so. What do you think our next episode is going to be? I don't know. Well, man. we done. We we just finished looking back. So what can so we do now? I guess you stop just looking. Turn around. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like if I physically move my whole body, <laughs> oh. I'll turn around the other way. No, I like that. I was just going to say we can just quit. That's yeah. true. Yeah. I mean, that could. I mean. Yeah. Oh, and the new logo. Oh yeah. If if you're reading this, if you're listening to this, if you're consuming this, that should be another logo. If somehow you're reading this audio, <laughs> yeah. Podcast, how are they reading this? No. If you have that. Major, major talent. I always First said off, that contact us. It's the name of a Drake album. And seriously, just want to, if you're reading this, it's too late. But. First, find the person that typed out this transcript and find yeah. out what their yeah. story is. <laughs> but yeah, we, we have a new logo that we've kind of uh, agreed upon. Um, I hope you enjoy it. We've, we've, we've had the other one for so long. Yeah, man. So it's, it's, it's a nice welcome change. Yeah, we'll be, we'll, and we're, we're trying to get more. Some some new icons, some new artwork, some some better branding um, to better place us in, you know, almost the middle of 2018. We need some 
new paint on this mm-hmm. on this old house. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so keep an eye out for more stuff coming out. But hopefully, you dig the new artwork. Definitely let us know what you think about it, or um, if you have any ideas. As always, for other future episodes, we are always open to them. Uh, cool. We'd love some feedback. If you have any feedback on this episode, maybe some categories that we missed, maybe some ideas, films that you want to talk about, hit us up on Facebook. Um, we're pretty responsive on there if you guys ever want to have a conversation. you damn right. You watch that shit. Um, <laughs> we might even record an episode that you'll never hear. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> and then talk um, about it for a little bit. <laughs> um, but yeah, be on the lookout. Next episode will be episode 213. We'll do our summer preview. Yes. That's the turnaround look forward. Yes. We were getting at before. So we'll go through the, the four summer months, each pick a movie that we're most looking forward to each month, and then kind of just chat it up a little bit, give you an idea of what you should have on your uh, must-see list for the summer of 2018. Uh, but until then, as always, you've made our day. Thanks. Bye.